Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, where it's time to sit back and enjoy a day out at the Yorkshire Wildlife Park with Pitt McGarry, as he captures one of the most popular and charismatic creatures, the meerkat. Today we're at Yorkshire Wildlife Park and we're here at the meerkat enclosure and I'm going to do some sketching from life of the meerkats. I'm just about to start sketching the meerkats, but one of the, the problems with sketching live is the animals move around. So we're going to try and find a common pose that they return to repeatedly. So if by any chance they do move off, they'll come back to that pose again at a later stage and we can continue to sketch. Okay, we've got a meerkat posing nicely for us on the top of the, of the mound at the moment. So we'll try and capture him. Well, he, he's moved off, but I still uh, can remember the pose he was in, so I'll just get an outline of that. So when he returns to that, which he will in a minute, we can continue on. Okay, well, let's, let's move to another sketch, because he's clearly not going to come back here. Let's just move to a quick sketch of him. We've got this one posing looking up at us at the moment, so if I quickly capture that in a... Capture his ears here. This is only a very loose sketch because they're, they're, they seem to be very active at this time of night, so... In fact, we're going to actually have to do a, a little series of sketches here. We're just capturing the, some light sketches of the of their, uh, their lookout pose here. Catch an upright position of the of them as they're looking out. They always have a lookout, uh, meerkats, where they're, they're watching out for predators such as eagles and, and uh, raptors coming in. And then they will, um, they will warn the rest of the group and they'll disappear uh, quickly into their burrows if, uh, if they feel there's a, a, an incoming threat. So we've got a couple of nice little um, sketches coming along here. These are very loose at the moment because we, we, they, they seem to be quite active. Um, Try and get some of the shading in here. But, um, a little bit more pointy nose and capture the brow. And just have to pop in the eye a little bit. They've got their paws dropped down. Where they, and again, they, he's moved, but we managed to capture him in his lookout pose. And it's, now we've now got the, the one originally turning to the looking the other way so we can actually get that finish this one off so I've actually got a number of sketches and we're it's quite exciting in a way that we uh, we've got three poses common poses that they're returning to and we're, we're capturing all three of them here uh, we can actually build them into a try and get these little stripes they've got on their body and a leg coming down Foot to them. He's watching me at the moment, so we can actually return to that pose. So, so we're catching several poses that the meerkats commonly return to, and it gives us a feel for, for how, how these uh, animals interact with their environment. The only very light, loose sketches, we've got a limited amount of time, they're very active, so we're just trying to capture the essence of the animal. We might even just do a little bit of the, the, the log around them. While they're moving, I'm trying to find one where I can get the hindquarters in. We'll just loosely put that in. A 
one in the front here laid down with his tail. So we've just got a little loose sketch of, of meerkats in different poses just to give you an idea of how, how difficult it can be for working from life when the animal's moving around. But we've captured the essence of, of, of these meerkats in this sketch. Great tip there for sketching realistic poses. Thanks, Pip. Why don't you try sketching your favourite wildlife animal and show us how you get on by uploading examples of your work to the community section at the SAA website. Just visit saa.co.uk for details. Right, it's time to cross over to the other side of the studio and join versatile artist Paul Beatty as he shines the light on the secret for seeing the true colour of your work 24 hours a day. You shouldn't be without an artist's daylight lamp. It's um, crucial to all the work that we do. It allows me to work in the evening where normally you can't work because the light you have is artificial and it doesn't show up the true colours of the paint. This is the same one I have at home here. It's um, Professional Artist Daylight and it's um, absolutely superb. As I said, it allows me to work through the winter months, um, even late in the evening in the summer. Otherwise, I can end up working before I have one of these. I'd end up working through into the night because I didn't want to stop doing the work I was doing. And what ends up happening is I go in in the morning and the, and the painting's ruined because all the colours are completely wrong and I've gone too far into it to actually be able to remedy or save the image. So if you maybe look through this camera here and you look at the image, I'll show you the difference that the day, uh, professional daylight lamp does to my painting in the evening. I'll turn it on. And there you go. It's absolutely superb. It's absolutely crucial for any, any artist, whether you're amateur or professional, to have a daylight lamp. And um, I would not be without my professional artist day lamp. They're absolutely superb and cr critical for being able to work any hours, day or night. Thanks, Paul. A daylight lamp is the perfect accessory for finishing off your works of art when the light starts to fade or once the nights close in. Check out the SAA Home Shop for the full range available to help your artistic talent shine day or night. Visit saa.co.uk for full details. Right, folks, time for us to take a little break, but join us in part three when SAA professional artist Peter Woolley returns to put the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. See you soon. <laughs>